Lincoln puts the North's entire industrial might behind one final push. The man who will lead the charge from Chattanooga to Atlanta, William Sherman. His orders, to stop for nothing. I would make this war as severe as possible and show no symptoms of tiring till the South begs for mercy. Advancing under the cover of night, Sherman's march is sustained by one of the greatest logistical operations yet seen in this conflict. Sherman knows he needs to throw everything he's got at the Confederate Army. While he uses his own supply lines to maximum effect, he destroys those of the South, ripping up their railroad and bending it beyond use. In one day, the North supply lines replace 200,000 bullets. South is left scavenging on the battlefield for spent rounds, food, even old boots. Sherman calls it total war, a scorched earth approach that becomes the trademark of modern warfare. Finally, with Atlanta under siege, Confederate forces set fire to their own munition stores before abandoning their city to the Union soldiers. Sherman's tactics of total war have won out. His victory helped secure Lincoln's election in the fall. With Atlanta in ruins, he just keeps going. Now launching what will be his final assault, the March to the Sea. In the 19th century equivalent of shock and awe, 62,000 Union soldiers wreak a 60-mile wide path of destruction across Georgia from Atlanta to the coast at Savannah. Supply lines are cut. Villages are sacked and crops torched. Anything of military value is destroyed. 